STEAM lesson for August 26, 2019 is Doing Science. The book of the week will be Charlotte the Scientist is Squashed. When you enter the lab, these objectives will be on the board. Make sure that you cover these with the students. Let them know this is the what that we're going to learn and let them know how we're going to do it. Procedures will also be on the whiteboard along with anchor chart and vocabulary words. Please make sure that you cover everything on the board before you go to the next step. The word of the week, which will be posted on the discovery table, will also be, uh, I will make some cards that will laminate so that you can put those on your word wall. And it will also be posted on the little password board as you enter the STEAM lab. That word will be observation, which is to look at something closely in order to get information. The read aloud, the read aloud which needs to be uh, this a video, but it'll need to be played before you enter the STEAM lab. The title of the book is this one right up here, and here's the story. Let's read, Charlotte the Scientist is Squished. Charlotte the Scientist is Squished, written by Camille Andrus, illustrated by Brianne Farley. Charlotte was a very serious scientist. Protective glasses, a lab coat, and a magnifying glass was her essential scientific equipment plus a clipboard for important notes. Charlotte solved problems by conducting experiments that followed the scientific method. And Charlotte had a problem. She was squished. She was squished at the table. She was squished in the tub. And sometimes, she was even squished on the toilet. Hey! It had become impossible to conduct her experiments. Her test tubes were taken, her beakers got broken, and her specimens were spoiled. Charlotte needed some space. Time to use the scientific method. Step 1. Ask a question. How can I get some space around here? Step 2. Form a hypothesis. Hypothesis. If I can get rid of my brothers and sisters, I will have room to be a real scientist. Step 3. Test the hypothesis. Experiment. She tried an experiment to make everyone disappear, but it didn't work. She tried another experiment to make herself disappear, but that didn't work either. Bang, clang, boom, keep out. If she was going to get some space, she would have to go there. Step 4. Make and record observations. Charlotte was no longer squished at the table. She was no longer squished in the tub. And Charlotte could take as long as she wanted on the toilet. Observations. Meals. Check. Baths. Check. Toilet. Check. Important experiments. Space was splendid. Finally! Step 5. Draw conclusions. She had all the room she needed to conduct very important experiments using her protective glasses, lab coat, and magnifying glass. Her test tubes were tidy, her beakers looked brilliant, and her specimens were sparkling. Her hypothesis was correct. She finally had room to be a scientist. The only problem was, there was no one to talk to at mealtime. No one to blow bubbles with in the tub. And what was Charlotte supposed to do when she ran out of toilet paper? Hello? Space was lonely. Back to step two, form a new hypothesis. If I can have friends in space, then I won't be lonely, and I can be a real scientist. Time for more experiments! 
Charlotte tried chocolate, but it was too tempting. The balloons kept floating away. And robot bunnies were poor conversationalists. They got ruined in the bathtub and tangled in the toilet paper. Boop. Charlotte missed her family. She even missed being the squish. So, she tried one last experiment. And reached a new conclusion. Charlotte didn't need outer space. She just needed her own space. So there's the story, and um, on the table when you walk in, you will see the flip chart, the safety flip chart. Make sure that the students understand indoor safety as well as outdoor safety. They can write some notes in their journal. I would like for, I know this week is probably going to be crazy making sure everybody has a journal for science, but if you do have yours ready, you can bring it. If not, just don't worry about it. But we would like to get in the habit of making sure the students bring their science journal each time they come to the STEAM lab. Um, next, you'll hear, you'll see um, a video that you're going to need to watch, which is a hand lens lesson. I want to play just a quick part of it. What you see is a, a tray. It's got several things for them to look at through a hand lens, but I want you to watch how this teacher teaches them how to look through a lens. This takes a minute to come up. Okay, a scientist is someone who explores things. And today I'm going to teach you how to use a magnifier. Everyone say magnifier. Magnifier. Okay. A magnifier makes things bigger. So it makes little things bigger. So everyone watch me, and in a minute, it will be your turn. So this is a magnifier, and when I take a magnifier and I look in the magnifier, it makes things bigger. It makes little things bigger. Now, it helps if you cover one eye. You could close an eye, but it helps if you cover one eye so that only one eye is looking through the magnifier. So I'm going to demonstrate to you how to use the magnifier, and then it will be your turn, okay? So here's a penny. Is a penny little or big? Little. A penny is little, and it has little letters on it, and it's very hard for me to see. So I'm going to put it on my cup here. I'm going to cover one eye. I'm going to put my magnifier on my eye, and I'm going to look at the penny, and it makes it bigger, okay? Now, if I take away the magnifier, it's small. And if I put the magnifier in front of my eye, it is bigger. Now, I don't want to it's put it right on my eye. That, I'm just putting um, it in front of my eye. To keep the object still. A lot of times they'll move it around. But have them make sure that you have them get out of this. Make sure you let them, if whatever they're looking at, they can lay it on that cup or lay it in the palm of their hand. But they have to keep the object they're looking at still to get the best results from the hand lens or magnifier. I will call it a hand lens for this lesson. That video is not for the students, that's just for you. So when you walk into the lab there will be on the big screen there will be a slide presentation, a PowerPoint, that I'm doing another vo voice over so I'll explain it. And when I say stop the, uh, the video, if you will stop it, you'll do an activity. I'll watch a little bit more stop and, and uh, do that experiment. So let's walk through it. So um, first two or three slides are just introducing uh, safety rules. Then we get into the, hand, the tools that scientists use. So the hand lens. Each student will receive a hand lens and observe items in a hand lens bag. It'll be little baggies with things to look at or I might even use a tray. So
Students can explore for three minutes. Make sure you use the timer. There's one on the table. Students will draw their findings on their journal insert page, which will be a little small piece of paper that they can draw on and then glue it into their science journal. So what this would look like is maybe they have a penny and they're looking at it without the magnifier and then what it looked like when they were using the, the hand lens. Next, on the slideshow, we'll, we'll show a picture of a microscope. Let the students observe things through the microscope box. Then you're going to introduce the telescope. Microscope, telescope, they sound a lot alike, so kids and adults get them confused. So we're going to compare. This might help. Micro means small. Tele means uh, at a distance. So mini microscope, maybe they can remember that way. So it's uh, a smaller. Microscope is going to be smaller. Telescope is going to be large. And there will be both of these that the students can see. We compare the size in uh, the steam lab. So you'll click on the video, go back to the carpet, and you'll see uh, the ruler. You'll explain then what a ruler is. It shows students that the ruler, a tape measure, yardstick, and measuring tape uh, are all tools that we scientists use to measure things. Compare and contrast the items one might measure with each. And since the story had um, toilet paper involved in it, there will be toilet paper in the room and students can measure the toilet paper so they can just use a square, roll it out, or maybe you say, okay, let's roll out 24 inches of toilet paper. Now, are they going to use a ruler or are they going to need a yardstick for that? Are they going to use a tape measure so they will understand why they would use one versus the other? So in this one, we're just going to measure toilet paper. I have some other things they can measure. And as soon as they're finished with that, if you have time, maybe they can walk around the room. Or this is an extended activity that they could use in the classroom with some of the tools that you borrow from the STEAM lab at a later time or later on in the week. Go back to the carpet, look at the video, and it'll show a thermometer. Now, in the STEAM lab, there will be an ice chest with ice. Each student, each table will receive a little cup. Put some ice and some water in there, or ice water, and you will discuss what a thermometer measures. Then the students are going to place a thermometer in the ice water. They're well before you do. They will, they'll need to look and see what number. It's probably going to be room temperature, so it's probably going to be 75 or maybe 100. Anyway, um, anyway, they're going to look at that, get a good look at it, maybe record that in the journal. Then put the thermometer in the ice water and watch it go down. And so they can understand that if it's colder, the numbers are going to go down, the temperature is going down, and uh, the less red, the colder it's going to be. So we talk about all of that, talk about seasons, but you are getting really quick to running out of time at this point, so keep it brief. You can visit this later. This is always fun for the kids, so uh, you'll, they each have a stopwatch, and there will be one timekeeper at each table. Have students hold the ar their arms out with their palms down. And start the timer and see who can hold their arms out the longest at each table. And maybe they can record the time. Like, okay, and you want to say go, click your timer on. Okay, Johnny, he kept his arms up for two minutes. So that they have a lot of time with this. They can record it in their journal. Balance. Um, this is something that uh, each table will have. It will be different weights, maybe rocks. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to put in there, but it'll all be together. And they can observe the outcome of weighing things, getting it balanced, talk about why it's called, maybe why it's called a balance. And that would be about a three-minute activity. There's some nets in the classroom, and that's something that a scientist can use. Students can draw in their journal. This can be done in the classroom. Maybe you could incorporate this in a writing lesson. But students can draw in their journal things one might catch in a collection net if they were exploring outside.